So this is the plan. We might be we might have to change it when we get on site and see what happens. But for right now, this is basically a rough overview of what we want to do. Over here, we want to uh, put a ground mount up. This kind of shows uh, 16 panels. We'll actually have 15, and uh, that's due to the limitations of the charge controller. Get into that a little later. But anyway, ground mount. Uh, 2 inch schedule 40 galvanized pipe set into the ground cemented in uh, racks going across and uh, braced back that way as well um, we'll be using a product called key clamp to do that because we don't have a welder on site but it, basically the the panels be set in in uh, five circuits of three panels a piece and they'll be coming into a combiner box We'll have breakers right here in the combiner box that will come over underground through a conduit and into our power center. This is an uh, outback power center um, consisting of the 3600 watt 3.6 kW outback inverter, the outback flex max 80 I think they call it, charge controller, there's a communication hub and a display. But basically the power will come into the charge controller and over here we'll have our battery bank consisting of 32 uh, Trojan T105RE batteries at 225 amp hours apiece. There'll be uh, four rows of uh, eight batteries apiece making a 48 volt battery bank that will come into the into the inverter. Um, then the inverter will have a line in from the generator where he has a generator coming in there and a line going out to the house uh, distribution panel and out to the loads. Um, so basically that's what we're looking to do. That's, that's hopefully what the end result is going to be. So this is a little sketch of the ground mount, how I Hope that it will go in, kind of have in mind. Um, basically, there'll be two rows of two inch Schedule 40 pipe that'll be about 5.2 5 feet apart, about 22 feet long. This will be about, the first one will be about four feet off the ground, and uh, the next one will be about 12 and a half feet off the ground, and that should give us our. Uh, 58 and a half degree angle that we're looking for to row, put the racks on. But basically what we want to do is we want to uh, dig eight holes, four in a line here and four in a line here, and uh, get them down below the frost line and cement them in. And then uh, we'll use a product called key clamp. And uh, These are basically key clamp connections right here. As you can see this one right here you basically put it on, use an Allen head and secure it and they're supposed to be almost as good as a weld so that will help us out quite a bit so we'll be using four of these and uh, let's see, we'll be using four of these these guys right here and then we have some uh, bracing ones they're kind of expensive but it would be a shame to put this thing together and then have it fall down on us. Uh, the bracing ones I'm looking for uh, right here looks like this and there'll be we're going to need eight of these because there's going to be four legs you need one section on top and one section on the bottom. These, these right here will go I don't have them written put on the picture here but they'll go from here down to here and then once that's all racked, once we get that all installed, then we'll have a, a racking system where we put aluminum racks, which are basically like aluminum I-beams. There'll be 14 of them that will be laid across this way. When we get done, this angle right here, plus the support that will come down like that, will make a triangle. So if the Schedule 40 2-inch pipe isn't strong enough, if the wind blows on the whole structure and pushes it that way, this system 
should be, this will hold that from going this way. These will tie into the back to keep them going that way, and the same will happen when the wind comes from behind them and pulls them out this way. The aluminum racks, the racking system we're using, is supposed to be good for up to uh, 110 miles an hour, so I have high hopes that that will work well. Um, let's see, what else is there? That's about it. Oh, and then after that, um, you put the you put the, we'll put the panels on there and they, the racking system comes with hardware where you just screw them in to that aluminum rail and uh, they should slide right in there and everything should go well. We got most of our solar components from a company called Wholesale Solar and uh, they've been surprisingly really good to work with. Their tech support is phenomenal, really good guys on the phone. Um, they've been really helpful. Anyway, this is a Outback Power Center, and this whole unit comes pre-wired, so it's basically a plug-and-play module that we're looking for here. You know, charge controller here, uh, inverter here, communication hub, and the display here. One thing that's nice about this is that you see a lot of systems that have a lot of, uh, you know, people putting breakers and switches and and fuses in the system. This has almost everything that we need. Um, the power coming into the system already has a breaker at the combiner box. So there would actually be five breakers. Um, I told you before that I, I would tell you why we had to do uh, five, five uh, strings of three panels apiece. The reason why is that the Flex Max 80 only works up to 80 amps. Now, at 48 volts, you have to figure, you have to kind of uh, leave a little room for temperature compensation and stuff like that. So basically what we'll be doing is the panels will be producing around 100, uh, when we put, put three panels in series together, they'll be push, putting out about 105 volts DC. They'll be coming into the combiner box and then running, uh, we're hoping to keep this less than 100 feet. At 100 feet, um, Oh, oh wait, I, I'm, I should back up. The reason why we, we couldn't go with 16 panels is that after, after 15 panels, we'll have hit the, max, the maximum and keeping the safety limits with it to, to work for the charge controller. So the client will be able to add to the system, but in order to add to the system, he's going to have to get another charge controller. And at that point, he could add panels to this system in multiples of three. So he could add another three, another six, nine, you get the idea. Um, so if he's gonna do that, he's gonna have to get another charge controller and that's really easy, the two talk to each other and that sort of stuff. But anyway, to get back to safety, the system is gonna be grounded at, at, the, at the ground mount. It'll come into a combiner box where it'll, where it'll be, uh, where it'll have breakers which will act both as switches and fuses. Then it will come into here. Um, this system right here has everything in it as far as there's a DC disconnect going to the battery bank. There's an AC line in disconnect. There's an AC, and, and they, not only do they disconnect, but they're breakers, so, you, so that they'll trip out if there's any fault, and going out to the loads. So everything's already protected in there. There's also a surge protector in there. Lightning, lightning is something that we always worry about. There's a lot of uh, talk about buying different lightning ar arresters. and The general consensus is a system like this will be able to handle uh, not a direct hit, but if, say, a tree in your yard gets hit or there's a spike of voltage somewhere in the system, the system should be able to dissipate it, plus there's a surge protector built into the system to protect it. If, you get struck, if the system gets struck by lightning, just like anything in your house, everything's going to probably, you know, fry. That's just the way it is, and um, that's something that we deal with in our house, what you're dealing with it right now, meaning if your house got a direct hit, probably everything in the house would be gone. And that's just kind of the way it works, and luckily we don't get struck by lightning that often, so that's how we're dealing with that. Um, apparently, even if we bought the lightning suppressors, if you get a direct hit, there's nothing they're going to do for you anyway. So that's why that is. So this is this is the system, and it's got all the protection in there, ground faults, everything. There's a communication hub that he'll be able to hook into his uh, router, 
so he'll be able to get all the system information anywhere in the world with web access, uh, mobile devices, and all that sort of stuff. Let me go back to this picture over here. Talking about wire, and we had to order a bunch of wire. We have a uh, 100 feet. I, I, we're not going to have the panels more than 100 feet away from the batteries. So this line right here, we've got two uh, rolls of uh, coils of 4 gauge wire. So uh, there'll be obviously one for positive and one for negative. And at the rate, the maximum rating for the panels and wiring them in series for three panels we should be pumping about 105 volts into this. The charge controller will take a max of 150 volts and uh, we leave a little room for temperature compensation and different spikes and that sort of stuff. But anyway, at the maximum amperage at 100 feet, if we keep it under 100 feet, we'll experience between 2 and 3 percent voltage loss by the time we got here, which I think is acceptable. Over here, maybe I should come back over here, all these jumpers we did with 4 rot cable, which is monstrous cable, and these cables going up, these ones over here going up over into the inverter, are, are all 4 rot wire. And the reason why this is 4 gauge, excuse me, 2 rot wire, not, not 4 rot. The reason why this is 4 gauge and this is 2 rot is because, one, this is a lower amperage and it's a higher voltage. So this will be coming out about 105 volts. These between each battery will only be about 6 volts a piece. When they come all together, each string will work out to 48 volts. Um, so when, when the inverter is drawing the most, we want to keep the distance between the battery bank and the inverter as short as possible because we don't want to lose anything there, especially on the low voltage side. So that's why we've kind of really got the beefy wires there. And instead of buying these um, jumpers pre-made, which we could have done, we saved more than half the money by uh, planning on building them as our, ourselves. We went online and made an order. We got these tinned uh, copper lugs for uh, two watt cable with three eighths holes in them. Three eighths holes are the size that come on the batteries so that we'll be able to screw them on. The reason why you want them tinned, you don't need, you can just use bare copper on any of the, any connections away from the batteries. But up around the batteries, where you're going to get some acid and some nastiness around there, the copper really eats up very quickly. These tinned ones work much better. And uh, they're a little bit more money, but you get them. We got a 10 ton crimper to crimp our wires and wire cutters. Then we got a whole bunch of this inch and a half, uh, four feet pieces of, uh, of heat shrink with the mastic inside of it. So the idea is that we'll measure exactly how long we need. We don't want to do this until we get the batteries in place in case we're, we don't have the area for this. If we have to move them, we'll, we don't want to be short. So once we get everything right, then we'll measure these areas and we'll make up all of these different jumpers. And uh, we do that by cutting the wire, stripping back the end, putting these lugs on it, crimping them with a 10 ton crimper, and putting heat shrink over it, and heat shrinking it down so that none of that acid can ever go and wick its way back into the wire. Um, I say if you're going to spend a lot of money on a system and a lot of money on this, you might as well spend a little bit of money to do it right and protect yourself. As far as the battery bank goes, as I said before, we'll be using the Trojan T105RE Renewable Energy 6 volt deep cycle battery. They have a pr very good reputation and they should be relatively easy to install and maintain. We've got them set up. This is a little sketch I made of how I hope to put the battery bank together. There may be some, uh, we might have to go to plan B. There might not be enough room in the area that the, that the client wants to put them in, and we'll have to deal with that. At, when we get there. But basically, we're going to have four rows of eight batteries connected in series. So we'll be making 
jumpers, instead of buying them, we're going to be making them with two watt cable and tinned ends jumping across, you know, uh, positive, positive, negative, positive, negative, all the way across here, and doing that across each one, and then having all the positive lined up here coming out this way, and all the negative coming out here this way. And, uh, so that's how the battery bank is, that's plan A for putting the battery bank together. So that's about it. That's what we're hoping to do. It's a uh, day before crew change, getting ready to get off the boat, be home with the wife and kids for a couple days, and, and head up to Michigan. Apparently uh, all of the stuff we've ordered has showed up, except uh, the truck coming from California that had the uh, solar panels, the power center, and the racking system showed up and it looks like it's missing one tube of those aluminum racks so uh, we're working on that but we got a little bit of time before that happens other than that we'll put this together stay tuned hopefully you're following along you're liking this um, like I said before I uh, appreciate the support you guys have given me um, feel free to comment ask any questions if you need any links of where we got stuff um, by all means, put that in the comments and uh, I'll get back to you. Um, the next series of videos that I want to make, hopefully will be on site of what we're going to be doing, uh, you know, where it is we're going to be digging, and then show some video of us putting everything together, then wiring it up, and then trying to work the bugs out of it, if there are any, which there usually are. But anyway, we'll, we'll try to work that out, and uh, hopefully you'll follow along. At the end, we'll recap and uh, talk about exactly how much everything cost and uh, if we run into any problems we'll go over that to hope, hopefully help you so if you go through a project like this you might be able to uh, not have to reinvent the wheel thank you for watching and uh, hopefully uh, you'll subscribe